buckle up, sports fanatics. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast, your HQ for in-depth sports talk. Join host Kevin L. Warren and crew as they dissect the hottest stories, ignite debates, and bring you closer to the action. From locker room whispers to expert takes, we cover it all. It's game time, so strap in and grab a drink. The Sports Chasers Podcast starts right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's happening, everybody? It's another another edition of the Sports Chasers Podcast, but we're coming to you live on a Saturday afternoon, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard, a little little bit before 5 EST. Um, We're going to be talking about hockey, the NHL trade deadline. It came and went. It was a frenzy that went. I really didn't do it justice. In fact, I jacked it up the other night. Yes, I did. And um, But hey, we got the hockey expert back with us, um, part of the crew, Dan the Hockey Dude. Dan's going to take it away. Dan, go ahead, my brother. Well, Sports Chaser fans, apologize. You know, we haven't hit that level where, you know, this is all we do. So some of us had to go and do, you know, adult the daycare. Other <laughs> you know, adult daycare, the, you know, get to a real job, you know, pay the bills. But, you know, I tried to get it off, but, it, you know, couldn't happen. And that pissed me off because that's this is like Christmas for me favorite time of the year when trade deadline comes up and there was, you know, multiple trades wasn't all, you know, on Friday, you had a bunch on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, some of those teams, you know, made decisions earlier in that and made some moves. So there was a lot to get into a lot of, a lot of moving parts and, you know, we'll get through the trades and then, you know, We'll, de- we'll decide, you know, maybe who's the winner, who's the losers on paper. Okay. Gotcha. So who, who you got up first, Dan? As so far- what I thought we'd do with this, just to make it a little bit easier on myself, um, I figured we'd go like Eastern Conference, the trades made, and then we'll switch over to the West and what they made, and then we'll get into, you know, kind of what teams got better and what teams didn't. Okay. So there, there's, there's, like I said, there, there's some trades that, you know, teams that didn't do shit in the last three days, but made some moves, significant moves, you know, at the end of February or in January and kind of held pat. And this was kind of like a buyer's market, I want to say, because, some of the guys that got traded and the net that came back for them was kind of iffy, if you know what I mean. Like, okay, you know, Dumba left the um, the I think Arizona for a fifth round pick, and that's it. And it, the dude's really good, so we'll get into that, but we'll start off. We're gonna go like the way I kind of did this is I looked at the East and the West and started at top team down to number eight because, in essence, the teams that were in the playoffs are really the only teams that made moves that were helping their team. Everybody else kind of sold. Like the Isles, the Islanders didn't do shit. They didn't trade nobody. They didn't get picked up by anybody. They didn't do nothing. And they got two games in hand. They're two points out of a playoff spot. And then, like, in the West, most of those teams, like, every team was pretty much below the bubble, sold. So there's no real rhyme or reason to get into what they did because all they did was give players away, which we'll talk about (laughs) with the teams that, you know, acquired them. So first up, we got Florida. In the East, number one team so far. They picked up Tarasenko from Ottawa. And it was for a a 2024 fourth round and a 25 third round pick. Then they also picked up Caliposo from Buffalo for um, Kale. I know I'm going to kill this. Sajinlin. No, I messed it up the other night too. So, (laughs) yeah, some of these names are real hard. Yes. Unless you hear it on broadcast, you have no idea. Uh, who's the defenseman in a seventh uh, 
pick in the 24th draft. And then they swapped goldies with the Penguins. They sent uh, Ludwig, uh, I think it's Weber, in a conditional 25 seventh round pick to Pittsburgh, and Florida gets Magnus Helberg. Mm. So best best team in the East right now. They picked up Tarasenko and Oposo. You know, both veteran players, both have playoff experience. You know, there wasn't a lot that they probably really needed to upgrade other than depth in the forwards. So, you know, I'll give them a B plus. And then we move down to Boston. Boston picked up Andrew Peak, uh, a defenseman from Columbus, for J- uh, Jacob Zabril in a 27, 2027 third round pick. And they also picked up Pat Maroon from the Minnesota Wild for Luke Toporowski, a left winger, and a 26 conditional sixth round pick. So these conditional picks are usually dependent on what the team does in the, the rest of the year. So if Boston gets to the conference finals, that pick might move up to a five. If okay. they go to the Stanley Cup, maybe it moves to a four. And if they win the cup, maybe it moves up to a three. So so, so just to explain to some of the folks, you know, some of the um, novice folks, the higher the, the, the standing where the, the team finishes with these conditional picks, the lower the pick will go. Am I, the higher know, the pick. The higher the pick will go. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so like with conditional picks, it's usually based on how the team that they go to does. So the farther they go in the playoffs or if they win the cup, the pick that they're giving back usually gets better for the team that traded. You know, so, you know, like we just said, you know, so Maroon went from the wild, you know, to Boston. Well, if Boston makes the final, then the wild get a better pick. If they go to the cup final, they'll get a, a better pick. If they win the cup, that pick might go up another round. So, and, and if they, they get bounced in the first round, it stays what it's at. Goodbye. You know, kind of thing. Right. So, like, Florida and Boston, like I like watch, like you know, I was texting you early. I had three different games on at one time. I was in, I was in heaven, you He's know, glory. Yeah, I watch it all this hockey, but <laughs> watching the the Pens and Boston, they um, the goalies playing today, Olmark, they had a deal in place, I believe, with the Kings, and. He had a 16 team where he could void the trade, like a uh, limited no trade cost. And he, he decided he wasn't going to move his family and everything to the West Coast from Boston. Right. So he's still there. Okay. And that, that, that's so Boston, they're limited. They don't have picks, they don't have the prospects. So, but they're still really good. And that means they're, they, they are going for it. Yeah, well, you know, they lost Bergeron, they lost yeah. um, Krejci to retirement, but still, they're like if they win this game today against the Pens, they're going to be the best team in the East and overall in the league right now. So, do they miss them? Eh, probably, but not so much. They're still doing really great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then third place in the East, we got the Rangers. And I kind of like, you know, I know your your head's pretty big to begin with, but it's probably going to swell a little bit when I talk. What about, what about that move with Columbus? Oh, that uh, getting Jack Rosalovic. Yes, for a twenty six conditional fourth round pick. Yeah, he, he's a big body. Like, look, you got to understand. Her, um, he rolls out. They got to like anytime teams go to the playoffs. What are they looking for? Depth at forward, depth at defense, and if they have an issues or they think they can get better in goal, they get a goalie. But you got Jonathan Quick and you got Sisterkin, so your your goaltending's fine. 
So they picked up Rosovic, which is a big body from Columbus. And I think it was this wasn't that big of a deal. Whereas the the dude from Minnesota Wild, uh, was it Recton or Pecton for uh, Turner Ellison? Uh, I don't think that was a big deal. But they did make a deal with the Penguins to get Chad Ruido. I saw that too. Yeah. For for a 27, 2027 fourth round pick. And that's just insurance. So if any of your D go down, you have an experienced guy that's been in the playoffs, won a Stanley Cup. He's solid. He's not going to score you a ton of points, but he's going to play defense. So that's kind of how this thing works when you get to the trade deadline and you're in contention and you have the possibility, you know, going all the way, you try to figure it, you know, fit all these holes that you might have. So like, you know, if Truba get a, goes down, you know, or Fox goes down, you have a guy that has experience in playing in the playoffs and winning championships, be able to come in and know, you know, his role, what he needs to do. But I think by far the biggest thing you guys did was you got Alex Wenberg from Seattle for 2024 second round and a 25 fourth round pick, you know, with like we talked about with uh Heedle being out, this is a big addition. This kid's really good. You know, he's going to solidify, you know, your forwards. They probably, you know, we're trying to look for a scoring, you know, big time score, but, you know, there's a few and far between when it comes to the trade deadline and what you're willing to pay because they were in on the Getzel trade. But like when we get in to Carolina next, you know, what the Pens were asking for Getzel, the Rangers didn't have. They didn't have a roster player they could give them. They don't have a lot of prospects that they could give them or draft picks. So, they, they were kind of hampered in that way, you know, trying because they fielded offers from all the teams and there was probably like five or six that were in, interested in Getzel and they they took what they could get the most from, you know, the team to give them the most things. And that's why it was Carolina. And we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, but They got a bunch. Go ahead. Yeah, but I, th- I think, you know, the Rangers, you know, they filled a couple holes. You know, with Wenberg and Rosovic, you know, and they got an insurance with Rue Weedle. So, you know, we'll see how it goes in the playoffs. Okay. Carolina's up next. Like you said, um, they got Getzel and um Smith from your pens. And um looks like they're going for it too. Go ahead. Well, a lot of the Carolina's problems been in the last couple of years is the pressure of people scoring goals, right? Because defensively, they're they're bonkers. They're very good in their own end. But, you know, I kind of starred these two. First one is Evgeny Knetsov from the Caps. So he was in the program, and he just came back. And the capital sent him to Hershey for, you know, conditioning, blah, blah, blah. Well, Carolina was able to trade for him for a 25 third round pick. Mm -hmm. And he was part of their championship team. So he knows what it takes to win. And he can score. And he put, I like when I was watching the game today against the Devils, he played and he played well. You know, it changes scenery, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's good for players that, you know, get a little stale where they're at. It gives them new energy, new group of guys, you know, a focus to get, you know, get back to, you know, the championship. So for them to get him for a third rounder, is huge. And like we, we talked about, they got Getzel and Ty Smith from the pens. For and, all, and also to, to interrupt you um, from a cap position wise, uh, Washington's retaining as I'm, I'm reading here. Um, 50% of, um, I can't pronounce this, of Kovetsilov's, um, uh, Knetsov. 
Knets off his um, seven point eight million dollar contract. Yeah, so it's only three point nine. Right. So that makes a huge difference. Huge cap friendly, yes. Yeah. So like Getz Owens, Ty Smith go from the Pens to, you know, Carolina, and they get Michael Button. You know, the Pens get Button back, and they get three prospects: uh, Billy Koyvenen, Vlasi Pononovarov. And Cruz, Cruz Lusish. Yep. Look, like I said, man, these these are some fucking hard names. Good. Um, and Good they, got a, they got they <laughs> got thank you a conditional twenty four first round pick if they make it to the finals. If not, they get uh, a second round pick out of that, and then they get a fifth round pick conditional, depending on where how far Carolina goes. But the Pens are retaining twenty five percent of Getzel's salary, which is six million. So I'm assuming that's probably about 1.5 million, somewhere in that range. So you know it works out from them. But you know, to get Kanets off and Getzel, like Ty Smith's kind of a throw in. He's you know AHL mm-hmm. guy, AHL guy, but Carolina doesn't need help on defense. Their defense is phenomenal. But to get a couple guys that can score Right. Yeah, that's that's huge for him. Like Getzel's just coming off long term injury report. So I wanna say he can't play until at least Sunday. So it'll probably be later in the week that that he, he ends up in the lineup. But yeah, you know, I thought Carolina did re- did really well for you know, the couple guys they got for what they gave up, what they already have. And Freddie Anderson just came off injury reserve from the blood clots that he had in like December or November. So now they got, you know, their goaltending back. Yeah, it's Carolina's looking looking good. And then we're going to move to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, and, I, I, and I'm going to read these trades, and then I'm going to get torched, but it's okay. But Toronto got Ilya uh, Labuskin from the, um, the Ducks for a 25 third-round pick. They picked up Joel Edmondson from the Capitals, a defenseman, for a 24 third-round pick and a 25 fifth-round pick. And then they were – like, I, I, I watched my boy. I, I feel for you, Steve Dangle. This you know, SDPN podcast. Love you guys. But they got Cade Weber from Carolina for a 26th round, uh, six, 26 six round pick. But this kid is like 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, like 200 pounds defenseman. He has potential. You know, for what they give up for him, it's not that big a deal. They got till I think August fifteenth to sign him to a professional contract. Okay. So he's still playing for uh, Boston University, so we'll see how that goes if they can they can sign him. But it's a good prospect. And then they got uh, Connor Dewar from the Minnesota Wild for a twenty six fourth round pick. And Dimitri, oh my God! Over oh, Niskova. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> but that being said, um, yeah, they added a couple defensemen. Like Edmonds is a good stay-home guy, sandpaper guy, hard to play against. The Bushkin's kind of the same way, but I don't know who's watched. Toronto play recently. Like I said, I don't mean to bust their balls, but but you will. That being said, <laughs> they lost twice. Like they are ten and three in their last thirteen games. Two of those losses are against the Boston Bruins, which, as it looks right now, that's who gonna, they're going to play in the first round. So that being said, the problem with the Bruins is. 
they're soft. Yeah, they added some grit or whatever into the, but <coughs> Marner, um, Nylander, Matthews, they want none of it. And until they grow a pair and stand up for themselves, they're going to get pushed around. And I, I remember watching the playoffs last year. Neil Leonard dumped the puck in. I believe it might have been against Boston. But along the boards in the offensive zone, and a D come over, and, and he just kind of checked up and, like, didn't chase the puck. It's like, in the playoffs, you got to fight for the puck. you got to retrieve the puck. Right. You know, you got to take a hit to make a play. But that's that's not their MO right now. So – Sorry, Toronto fans. Sorry. Look, you know, you got a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I I still think you, if you play Boston, you get bounced in the first round. So then, so you you're going on record saying this is a one and done in the first round again. If they play Boston, yes. <laughs> I swear the Toronto Maple Leafs are the adoptive um, NHL team. But- of the sports chases. <laughs> oh, they're 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 the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, oh, what the fuck is this guy's name? Hold on. Yeah, let's give the person the credit. I saw that too. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to give him credit. Oh, okay. Well, I, I want to make sure I know who I'm talking about. Because, you know, I joined, you know, the NHL Facebook pages, and this guy's like Yuri Kumi or something. And okay. he's like, besides the Maple Leafs, who had a hit in the trade deadline? And I was like, bro, you guys didn't do shit. You got a couple of defensemen, old defensemen. Didn't get any better. He just got a little bit worse, you know, a little bit less worse than you were before. Right. So, yeah. And, like I told you, I got in a pissing match on there about Matthews being the MVP. They're, <laughs> they're fucking like ninth in the league in standings. You're not the MVP if your team's last. Or man, is, that man is arguing with the the young, the young, uh, young yeah. people who have they have revisionist history. They don't know nothing about. Well, and you know what? I take that back. Not revisionist. They have Toronto Maple Leaf history, and where they just think the Maple Leafs are the best thing since the Cowboys. Yep. And, and they haven't done something. When was the last time they won the cup? 1967? Well, I was just going to say, you know, like like we used to say, you know, and you'll remember this, 1940. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. Yeah, 1967. Yeah, bro. 1994 for the Rangers again. Yes, <laughs> it's been a while. They, they haven't won a third round series in their existence. Wow. Because the last time they won the cup, they only had to win two rounds. So, hmm. chew on Trash. that. Yeah. So, we're going to move on. Yes. So, the Flyers, they picked up Eric Johnson, a defenseman from the Sabres, for a tw- 24 fourth round pick. Dennis Garanov from the Predators for Wade Allison, a right winger. And they also picked up Ryan Johnson a conditional 25 first round pick for Sean Walker, a defenseman and a 26 fifth round pick. So Johnson came from the abs and the the abs kind of made a couple moves like that to free up space for the guys they brought in. We'll get into that when we get to the West and then Detroit, the only thing move they made, they got redeemed. Semek, a defenseman, and a 24 seventh round pick from the Sharks for Klim Kostanen, a left winger. And then Tampa Bay. I thought this was like a, 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 just a steal of the trade deadline. They picked up Matt Dumba, a defenseman, a 25 seven round pick from Arizona for a 27 third round pick. That's it. Mm. Like, if the Pens could have picked this guy up for that, yes, and that's all he went for. They could have, they could have swung that. But I think Dumba's a really good player. But then they also got 
Tampa got also got Anthony Duclair in a 25th, uh, 25 seventh round pick from the Sharks for um, Jack Hampson, the defenseman, and a 24 round third pick. And this is what's kind of funny. It's like, you know, the East kind of were dabbling in a lot of trades. And then I got over, I got over the Western Conference, and there was just like a couple teams that made a bunch of trades and some that didn't do shit. And the Vancouver Canucks topped that list <laughs> where they did nothing. But they're the top of the West. So what do you need to do? You know what I'm saying? But in January, they got Lindholm from the Flames in that trade. And I think they were trying to move him because he's not really a fit there right now. So we'll see how that goes for Vancouver once the playoffs come. And Dallas, same thing. They really didn't do shit. You know, they did their stuff early. Yeah, uh, with 28th of February, they got Chris Tana from the Flames mm -hmm. for Artyom Gershinkov and a 24 second round pick and a conditional 26 third round pick. And then one of the other teams in the West that I didn't make a lot of, I guess, splash, but what they did do was an impactful was the Winnipeg Jets. They got Colin Miller from the Devils, you know, a solid defenseman for a 26th fourth-round pick. And they, they picked also Tyre Toffoli up from the Devils for a 24 third-round pick and a 25 second-round pick. So they, they plucked the Devils of a, a couple guys off their team, you know. And Winnipeg has a really good team right now. Yes. So there's not a lot to be done. And the other team that's really good in the West is the Avalanche. Like Nathan McKinnon has been killing it. You know, he's tops in the scoring right now as far as points goes. He's doing great. But they also did a little improvement. And some of these aren't that great of, you know, it's just house cleaning, you know, making room for the other guys. But they got a 24 fifth round pick from the Ducks. For Ben Myers, kind of moving a guy out, probably in his salary. But then with the Predators, they traded for Yankar, uh, Trennan, a left wing, and Graham Sword, a defenseman, for Jeremy Hansel, defenseman, for um, a 25 third round pick. Mm -hmm. They got Brandon Duhane, left wing from the Wild, for a 26 third round pick. They got uh, Casey Middlestat from the Sabres. For uh, Bowen Byram, the defenseman. And they also picked up Sean Walker, a defenseman, a 26th fifth round pick from the Flyers for Ryan Johnson for a conditional 25 first round pick. So, you know, they made a little, little bit of, you know, changes. So they're looking good. Gotcha. Can you, get, can you give me just a sec? No, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Okay. So as Dan, he goes, um, I didn't know he was going to do that. Let me um, get you some of the scores for this afternoon. The Boston Bruins are currently uh, beating up on his Pittsburgh Penguins. It's 3-1 to one in the third, 1240 left. The Florida Panthers are playing against Calgary out in Sunrise, Florida. It's 2-1 to one in the first, excuse me, yep, uh, in a one, in a, excuse me, in the second period, six, 648 left. The Carolina Panthers uh, defeated the New Jersey Devils 4-2. Uh, that game was in New Jersey at the Prudential Center. Nashville uh, defeated um, Col Columbus 2-1. And then I'm just giving the rundown of scores and finals. Uh, Edmonton, uh, excuse me, Buffalo defeated uh, Edmonton 3-2. I said Nashville defeated Columbus. And tonight you got Chicago against Washington, Philadelphia at Tampa. Ottawa, San Jose, and Toronto, uh, Canada's team, I guess, uh, <laughs> against <Yeah>. Montreal. <laughs> original uh, six game. The original six game. The Blues against my Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Detroit against Vancouver. And Winnipeg, uh, I'm sorry, Detroit against Vegas. I get the, the V in the mix. And then Winnipeg faces Vancouver. Dallas against the LA Kings. And that's it for today. Go ahead, Dan. 
Sorry, the Jehovah Witnesses were trying to convert me. My bad. But getting back to, you know, the West, the Oilers, I thought this was another team that kind of improved their, their stock going into this for the rest of the season. They picked up Troy Stretcher or Stetcher defenseman mm-hmm. for a 24 and a 24 seventh round pick from Arizona for a 27 four fourth round pick. And then the, the main jam that they got was Henrik, Adam Henrik, left wing and Sam Carrick center from uh, in a 24 seventh round pick from the ducks. And for, it was a 24 first round pick and a conditional 25 fifth round pick. So like Edmonton's kind of filling the holes that they're struggling with, you know, like, look, I was bagging on them for the whole year. Like if you're going to keep playing like this, you're never going to make the playoffs. No. You know, and they got that 16 game winning streak. No. Like, Woo, here they come. And now they're back in business, but you know, that only lasts so long. And then you get back to, you know, where, where are you really at? So they added a couple guys that, you know, when the playoffs come, there's going to be injuries because everybody's giving up their body, the block shots, the whole nine yards. So you got to have depth to be able to bring guys in if somebody gets hurt. And that's why I think, you know, kind of like Boston, they got, both are outstanding goals. So we're on Jake out. Sorry about that. Uh, you're good. Yeah. But, you know, you got both your goaltenders that shared the Vezina last year still there. So if one gets hurt, you still have a top notch goaltender. And, you know, like the Avalanche, they got Gorgiev. But if something happens to him, you know, I couldn't even tell you who the backups are. But I saw the graphic where one was four and three, and the other one was like five and four. So it's a big drop off. So that being said, you know, with you know the cap and the money available and draft picks and you know stuff that you can send, you know they kind of got hampered, and they couldn't really make that deal to get a backup goaltender. So like I said, like the Rangers, like they did fucking awesome getting Jonathan Quick. Is a backup. Like the media hyped it up. You know, so Sturkin got kind of hurt for a while there. And then you brought in quick and let him play a lot of the games. And what did he do for you? He he held a fort. He got you a bunch of dubs, a bunch of points. And that's what that's kind of what you need, you know, possibly in the playoffs. Like I can remember when Mark and Andre Fleury, you know, wasn't playing great. And we brought in Matt Murray. You know, and he won two cups for us. Sure did. And and that's, you know, it's not always one guy. You got to have a couple. But getting back to our list here. So the L.A. Kings did absolutely shit. <laughs> not, no trades. And they were linked to get Olmark from Boston, but he nixed the trade because that was, you know, wasn't one of the 16 teams he had on his trade, you know, that he right. So that being said, you know, they did what they could and it just didn't work out. And then the predators, they picked up Zucker from Arizona for a 24 six round pick, which that's, that's a real good pickup for what they gave up. And then like we talked about, you know, with the flyers trading earlier, they got Allison, and they gave up uh, Gurnanov and then uh, Jeremy Hansel, same thing before. In the pick, they gave that him up to the abs for Trennan and Sward. And then they, they traded with Chicago and got Anthony Bolivier, a left winger, for a 24 fifth round pick. Yeah, Chicago was going to be bad. They're 16, 42, and 5. Yeah. Uh, yeah they they, just, they were, I was surprised they didn't sell more than they did. God damn it. It's 4 1. Yeah, I read that before you. Um, um, 
Damn. Yeah, the um, yeah, Blackhawks are not that good this year, and um, they're along with the Sharks and the Ducks. Um, yeah. But here's it, my this is my, this is my favorite though. Oh. So so the number eight team in the West, the Vegas Knights. So they picked up Anthony Manta, right winger from the Caps, for a 24 second round pick and a 26 fourth round pick. Which Manta is a big dude, and you know, right winger, good player. And then they turn around and they go, you know what? We're going to pick up Noah Hannafin from the Calgary Flames for a Danielle Mariana Manoff and a conditional 25 first and a third round pick. And then late at the buzzer, they picked up Thomas Hurdle for a 25 and a 27 third round pick to the Sharks. And they gave them a 25 first round pick and David Edstrom. And we're we're we're, got, we're gonna kind of get into this in a minute, but so two or three teams that I thought did really well in the trade deadline. Carolina did. I think Winnipeg did pretty okay for what, what they needed. And the Vegas Knights. And the Vegas Knights one is Whoever the number cruncher is or the cap space guy is, the capologist, long, yes. The, the long term uh, injury report, you know, guy that they got, you know, Vegas up his salary because they used all 30 million of their long term injury report people. Because Mark Stone has like a bruised or I don't, something with a spleen and he's on long-term IR and that's how they got the money to be able to get hurdle. Like the guys they picked up and the guys they already have and the amount of money that is invested contract wise on these guys is probably close to 150 million because they can bury like Tampa Bay. Thank you. Kucherov. And <laughs> John, John Cooper and your boys that buried him all year on LTIR, and then he came back for the playoffs. Well, you know, other teams picked up on that, and Vegas, you know, studied probably what you did and how you did it, and they use it to their advantage because they're freaking loaded. And I can tell you this is, you know, on. Easter Sunday when the Lord raises, so will Mark Stone. He will be back in the starting lineup for the pl first playoff game. And they're going to, like, Colorado, Vegas, Carolina, Florida, that's my top four teams. Carolina or Panthers are going to make it in the East. And Vegas or Colorado is going to make it in the West. So you got you got Carolina and Florida. You're saying I'll make it to the cup finals and Vancouver. I'm sorry. You said Vancouver? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. So the, the like depending on how the brackets oh, yeah. okay. come down. Yeah, right. get, yeah, how it works out. But top two teams in the East, Florida, Carolina. West, I got Vegas. And, you know, here's the thing. You win your division, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to play the eighth, eighth team, eighth, you know, team seed. Well, yeah, the, yeah, that should be cakewalk. We should get to the next round. No, no, no. You're playing fucking Vegas. Who's got all their boys? Mark Stone back. Yeah. Martinez. Well, you know, well, yeah, Vegas is playing rope with dope. You know, they they've been, like you said, injured and all that, and they're they're the cup finals champions, and sometimes the brackets doesn't work in your favor, right? You you do all that you did. You won the division. You won the conference. Yeah, now now you get to play the defending Stanley Cup champions. Who's, who's what? They're they're back at full strength, like you said. When they come when when it comes back to the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah. So you know, 
like I, I like I told you, I watched a ton of you know who won who lost videos of the trade deadline i watched T tsn you know like i told you the website i watched their show on the fire stick you know during the day and you know what they kind of thought and what they were saying and it's like man you know vegas found the loophole that tampa used for a couple of years to win the cup and they, you know, they exploit it. So it's like, if it's okay, then, you know, other right. needs to figure out how to do the same thing or get better people in there that know how to do it, you know, but it's, like I said, depending on, because I think the way the standings are now, Boston will play Toronto well, I mean, it really depends if Toronto or Buffalo or sorry, Boston wins the the Eastern with the most points, then they'll get the first wild card or a second wild card. So it really depends on how the rest of the, I think there's like 20 games left. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, if, if Boston plays Toronto in the first round, Sorry, Yuri. Your boys are going down. <laughs> they, they're, they're, when it comes to playoffs, even if you're not a physical player or a fighter mentality player type thing, aggressive player, you have to play that way in the playoffs. Doesn't matter. Because what did we watch last year? Who, who was the big boy on the schoolyard? Florida. They, yep. they bullied the shit out of everybody. Everybody. The only, the only reason why they didn't make the cup finals was is because they were so beat up by the time they got to the conference final that, you know, guys, you know, Chuck had broken ribs and couldn't breathe and, and still tried to play. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a different game once you get to the playoffs. No load management there. Oops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, wrong sport. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like these guys, you know, go and get stitches and come right back out. Because, you know, it's important to them. Yep. Clearly. That, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's really going to depend on how the brackets match up. Like, you know, if Carolina doesn't have to play Florida to well, they get to, you know, the conference finals, then this is going to be a toss up. But I truly expect Florida to be in the East, Eastern Conference finals just from what they did last year and how good they are. And like the West, the way Colorado has been playing, the new additions they picked up, you know that they filled some of the weakness. And that's the thing. It's like the guys they picked up made them better. But if Landis Scog can, can come back from his injury and play in the playoffs, that's a huge lift. So, you know, we'll see how that goes at the end of the year. But this is, this is the best time of the year because a lot of these games that they're playing right now, the teams have playoff implications, you know, where they're seated, who they're playing, and teams that are trying to get in that are on the – like the Islanders. They got two games in hand. They're two points out. Mm -hmm. They didn't do shit, but at the same time, if they can handle the business and win the games they got in hand, they could be right in there too because Tampa Bay Ta – I don't know, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay – is you know on the fringe, you know, they haven't been playing great, so it, it, it's a good chance that you know the Islanders can sneak in if they keep it up. So we'll we'll see, you know, and then you know, like I said, the but the best playoffs of any sport start, you know, 20 games, so we'll see how that goes.
So with with most teams that have they have between 17 and 20 games to go down the stretch, as they say, um, should be some good hockey being played. And um, April, here we come. It's March. March Madness for basketball is about to kick off. Yeah, yeah, enjoy that for you know the month, and then come back when that's over to the NHL playoffs, and you'll see some intense sports, hockey, you know, hockey. Speak, not, speak, nothing like it. Speaking of which, before we go, Dan, you didn't get a chance to publicly elaborate on it. Uh, I just want to play a clip from um, Ryan Reeves on him. Um, pretty much complimenting um, Matt Rempe of the New York Rangers. Let me pull it up here for you guys. Uh, You're just trying to get your boy, your Ranger boy. Up so much that it was, you know, the first period, it was almost like, hey, let's just get it out of the way. And then, uh, you know, he said no, which is completely fine. You know, the game didn't really call for it, you know, so he left it alone. And then, obviously, hold on, I didn't play it over on that side. Let me play it on <laughs> the side it needs to be played on. Hold on. Like the media hyped it up so much that it was, you know, the first period, it was almost like, hey, let's just get it out of the way. And then, uh, you know, he said no, which is completely fine. You know, the game didn't really call for it, you know, so he left it alone. And then, obviously, he buries Bush, and I thought. That was an appropriate time to ask, and you know, good on him for doing it. That's a big boy. He's definitely the longest I've ever fought for sure. He's like six nine or something. He's he's just really lanky. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure the biggest guy I've ever fought. You know, at the beginning of the fight, I didn't throw a lot because I had to make sure I was holding where I wanted to, make sure uh, I positioned him in the right spot. Um, you know, at first I think he had uh, me strung out a little bit, so I had to be patient and kind of get his grip off of that. And then once I was comfortable, I started throwing. It was almost cool to see because. Uh, it shows that uh, fighting's not dead in, in this sport. Uh, you know, people still kind of get amped up for it and, and enjoy that part. So seems to be a really nice, humble kid. Uh, talk to him in the box a little bit. So he's uh, it's going to be a menace in this league. Dan, your, your thoughts before we get out of here. First thought, what were love, you? love Revo. Love him. He, he, he's such a class act. And when it comes to, you know, fighting you know he's honors the code and you know like some guys you know they would say you want to go want to go and like you said you know he said he'd decline well some would just go after him but you know he's like okay yeah you're right you know it doesn't call for it we're not going to do it we'll, you know if the opportunity presents it we're, we're going to go at some point you know and then he just tapped the rep just absolutely torpedoed the dude in the boards. Yeah, he did kind of leave his feet. I mean, you don't have to. You're six seven, six eight, whatever the fuck he is. He's huge. And you know, and, and the, the best part about that fight, if anybody watches it on hockeyfights.com, YouTube, wherever, it's like Rempe looks back like at the bench to the coach or whatever, and is like, yo, we good? And it's almost like the coach says, yeah, go ahead. And it, the dude's, well, I think it's his left eye is just like the entire eye is like. It's purple. black and blue. It, yeah, yeah, he's all fucked up. <laughs> and, and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. You know, and he drops his shit and he held his own. I think he got the better of that fight. Like, you know, Revo said, you know, like I had to hold on and, you know, he's really lanky, blah, 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 you know. At first, yeah, he got the best of them. You know, Reeves got some in light, but, you know, he's right. This dude's going to be a freaking menace in the league because, you know, he's he he's like, you know, my boy, the human trash can in Washington, <laughs> Mr. Wilson. He, he he's, he's a player that can play the game. He has speed. He has the physicality. He has the talent, but also he's not afraid to drop the gloves and fight whoever. Like it was, it was like this, this this poor kid. Like they got twenty games left. You know, I would not be shocked if he doesn't have five or six fights in the last twenty games, because every team's tough guy is going to, you know, challenge him. You know, it is what it is, but you know. He seems like, like you know, Reeve said, he seems like a great kid. I've watched a bunch of the interviews with him. 
he's not full of himself. He's humble. He's just like, I'm just happy to be here, do whatever I can do to help my team. You know, if that's what it takes, you know, to help my team, yeah, then, you know, I'll punch somebody's face in. And, and you know, I know Reeves had an interview a little ways back that said they need to bring violence back to hockey. There needs to be more fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? Go, go, you know, the, the, those of you at home, Kevin, if you want to do it, go and look at the New York Rangers games and what the viewership was after he beat the piss out of Delorier from the Flyers. And then he played the next game, I think. This was a good one, too. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. He, he, yeah. That, yeah, Delorier is no slouch, and he tagged him up. And then he went to Columbus, and he actually got his ass beat yep. by, by Olivier. And that's where he got the black eye from. But that but didn't hinder him from going the next night, yeah. or two nights from then, to that's Toronto, and mixing it up with Reeves. Dan, we must, we must do a, with you, uh, maybe just do something about fighting in hockey. Do like a historical thing. Where it came from, why it come from, because you know a lot of people um, that don't watch hockey a lot, they want to know why is hockey legislated. Um, I, I'll even say the DA, DA, DA. Sometimes he has a problem where he says, "Why can they fight in hockey, but they can't fight in basketball?" I said, I said "Well, DA, that's probably a good question to ask Dan." That's I, that, that's load management. Whoa, <laughs> they they, they, didn't, they can't even play the game for forty eight. Like, here's the thing. They play 48 minutes, and they can't play the whole damn game. But yet you got guys that play 60 minutes on ice skating and play of the game. Like, granted, there are shift changes and whatever, but the, the, some of those defensemen play 30 minutes of the game. And, you know, the difference is, you know, well, if you look at basketball now, they're fighting now. But they just don't know how to do it right. They're like patty cake in each other. Like, you know. You know <laughs> they, they, don't, they, they don't know what they're doing. No. But, that's, but like with hockey, it's like, look, that's how, like, the referees can only do so much. And the rules can only do so much. So if your player takes a cheap shot, hit, whatever, from the other team, and one of your guys that says, you know what? I saw that. That's bullshit. Boom. Off come the gloves. We, we're going to fight. And that ends the shit. Once they fight, it's over. So you don't go to, the, you know, when they break it up and don't let it happen, that's when you have the shit happen in other games where it's like, you know, why do, why do we have a bench care? You know, we don't have any bench clearing brawls anymore. But you know that's where you don't have. I get it. Ball. You you let you let them do their thing, and like you said, Reeves and and Rippy, they was in the box talking. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's for dinner? Yeah, yeah. It's like, look, <laughs> it's like, look. Let the players police the game for the dirty hits, because you know, like the other night. I don't know if you you, you watched the other night, but Boston played Toronto, right? Some of the clips of it. Go ahead. And 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 Toronto pretty much worked them over or Boston did work Toronto over like they have all year. And it's like, okay, so they had some scrums, but it was like Marshan got cross-checked in the throat. And I think the brush got cross-checked in the throat on the same play. And it's like, when that shit happens, okay. So they went down five on three and they scored two goals off the power play on on that ensuing power play but that's the thing okay you're gonna cross check me in the throat if we don't score and we get up and we're winning guess what okay now you know we're gonna come after the guy that did it and he's gonna drop the gloves and if he doesn't then we're gonna beat the piss out of somebody that's really good on your team that doesn't fight to prove a point that you know if you're not gonna stand up for yourself then we're gonna pick somebody else and that's that's kind of the great equalizer in hockey is 
you know, if you want to run around and be a fucking idiot and hit people from behind or take dirty shots, you're going to have to stand up for it because someone's coming after you. And if you don't, the best player in your team is the one. Because I could remember, so this was Phil Kessel played for Toronto and John Scott played for Buffalo. And I forget what actually ensued, but I think Toronto had a dirty hit on somebody. So they put John Scott out when Phil Castle was at the face off. And he looked at Phil Castle and he's like, I'm going to beat your ass. Because if your boy's not going to stand up, it's going to be you. And this is probably 10 years ago. You could look on on YouTube. But Kessel, when the pucks drop, skates back and takes his stick, and you would think he was Paul Bunyan. He just started fucking slashing. Because <laughs> John Scott was 6'6". He was huge. And he was, he was an enforcer. He was the guy that did the fighting. And he was going to go after Phil Kessel to prove a point if it, the, boy, you know, the guy wasn't going to stand up for himself. But right. But that's the thing, you know, in the NHL, they allow fighting, you know, if they would get rid of the instigator role, a lot of the dirty hits would disappear again because guys go to protect their players, you know, teammates, and they get the extra two minutes and 10 minute misconduct, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, look, take that shit out. Like if they've really instigated, give them the instigator. But if somebody takes a dirty shot, let them handle it. Because you can't call anything or you won't call anything to make a difference in the game. So I'm interested to see what happens with the Toronto players that cross-check the, the Bruins guys in the head the other night. If they What kind of suspension or what kind of fine they get. Dan, I, I think we absolutely, because we, we're going to have to go here in a little bit. We have to do, absolutely have to do this justice and have just the standalone episode. It would be wonderful to bring the DA on on the whole thing of fight. Because I, I find it amazing. And you just said it about the the players legislating themselves, policing themselves. Kind of like how baseball used to do. But now baseball, I, well, to me in baseball, in the National League, before they had the um, designated hitter in both leagues, um, the pitcher won't act funny and throw at people. Guess what? He's coming to he's coming to bat, and he's and that's, going to be out. That's what the fuck I hate about the DH. Yes, can't do it no more. You get some jabroni out there just throwing at people, <laughs> and then then he doesn't have to come up and face the music. Right, right. And, so that means you have to take maybe, and I've got to hit somebody else. You see, oh, they'll hit who they think who's the weakest link on the team, and then they'll they'll take them on. So yeah, before they designated, especially in the National League, I used to love the National League because of that aspect. Oh, pitcher, you want to throw at me? Said player. All right, got you, my guy. When you come up next, I got something for you. Or even the whole written rules things of you know you're not supposed to show bug and stuff like that. My thing is get them out. That's that's the same thing in hockey. If you do the yeah. same shit, they they let them police the game. What about and we got to go. What about who was that 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 was on a breakaway on a um on a the goalie was um they had take the goalie out the game and they took a breakaway and he um, took a slap shot into an empty net and they started fighting them. Who, who oh, was that? oh, that was <laughs> Ottawa against Toronto. It was a Gregory or Gregory. <laughs> but what what's fucking hilarious about that is after that happened, it wasn't four or five days later that the women's the the um was it WPHL the mm-hmm. women's league they had the same thing happen where it they pulled the goalie and the girl came down and took a slap shot in the net. I was like, oh my god, yeah, if this was the men's game, you would have been in the corner board. <laughs> But I will say this though, I've I've watched several of that league's games. They are physical, very entertaining. Like 
if they can get some sponsors and grow grow the league by a few teams and some more play some more games, it is very very good hockey to watch. But did you see the thing I sent you about Aaron Hernandez throwing out the Cardinal guy in yeah. fucking spring training? <laughs> How yeah. the fuck is this guy still an umpire? Oh my god! Now, did you say Aaron Hernandez? You meant to say Angel Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez is a felon, and he's he's dead. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Wrong sport. <laughs> yeah, somewhat. Listen, man, we got to go. Um, Dan, we need to do more of these. I think these are great. And yes, we probably need to talk about hockey. I mean, not hockey. Hockey and fighting, and the whys and the history of it, and why they do what they do, and. And like I said, DA has absolutely asked me that question, and you answered it for me. They police yeah. themselves. Yeah, I mean, that's the point of it is, and that's why it's still legal. Mm -hmm. Like, all the other sports, you can't do that. Nope. You know what I mean? Where, you know, if you watch Slap Shot, it's like, you know, you take a penalty, you go to the box, you feel shame for two minutes, you get out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, you know, but the fighting thing is, you know, it's the, you know, Philadelphia, like I can remember when it was probably at the eighties and like they would have the NHL playoffs on ABC or CBS, whatever it was. And it would be the Rangers and like the flyers back in the day of uh, Bobby Clark, you know, Kevin Brown, you know, all those guys. And it was just, it was out of hand. Like those guys were just Philadelphia, you know, the one cup they won, I believe that's all they did was beat the piss out of each other and intimidate the other team. Mm -hmm. And they did that to the Russian team so much that they refused to come back on the ice when they had the, you know, the um, USSR at the time traveling playing the different you know nhl teams and you know i think that's kind of where they tried to start you know curtailing a bit but like the biggest problem i have right now is the, the well there's there's a couple problems one if you hit a guy and you lay him the fuck out and it's clean you gotta fight it doesn't matter who it is. It's it's like you can't throw a clean, hard hit and not have to fight. But it, it, and then, you know, the other side of that is if somebody takes a dirty hit as a teammate, you can't go charge the guy and drop the gloves because you get the instigator in a 10 minute. Right. And you're in the box for 17 minutes. So depending what part of the game it is, you might not play again, which I think is bullshit. Like, if they take a dirty shot on your player, get rid of the instigating rule. Just take that out. Like, if they do it, you know, don't... It, if, like, it's different if you drop the gloves and go after somebody that didn't do shit. Give them the extra penalty. But don't make it mandatory that if the guy drops his glove first and goes after somebody that takes a dirty hit... Right. You know, that, that, that's got to go. Yeah, I'm looking absolutely forward to the next 17, 20 games, even though my team's going to suck ass and not make it anywhere. But once the playoffs start, it's like, especially first round, when you got eight teams playing, you know, there's at least – Four games every other night. Every other night. Yep. It is absolutely amazing. It's such a good watch. And, you know, anybody out there that doesn't really follow hockey but kind of thinks, oh, uh, hey, this is pretty cool. Please tune in when the hockey, when the playoffs start because it's amazing. Or well, tune in now. Tune in now. Pick a team. Love to see you in. Hockey is an amazing sport to see people. And I'm going to say this. We're going to go. People absolutely skating. And navigating on skates with this rubber black puck, and uh, with 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 well, not even wooden sticks. What are they now? They um, whatever kind composite. of composite. 
Yep. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Dan, I'll let you have to say, let's say the last word and then we'll go. Thank you, man. Appreciate you for that. This was great. I know it's, it's awesome. Like I apologize that I, you know, I couldn't get off Thursday. Cause like I said, that's Christmas to me. I so wanted to talk about the shit on Thursday because there was so much going on and, you know, rumors and who's going where and what it means. You know, it was good to be able to kind of put out all the trades. And like I said, you know, Colorado made a lot of improvements to depth to get a lot better. Plus they get some people back from injury, you know, the other team, you know, Vegas did the same thing. They picked, they're like, it's like a freaking all-star team over there. And like I said, there's a there's a lot of bitching and moaning about that LI, uh, LTIR that, you know, the NHL is going to have to figure out or just say, hey, you can do it too and let them do it. But La Vegas and Abs, I think, out of the West, and I think Florida and Carolina out of the East. And like I said, you know, Carolina is kind of like my second team. And, you know, I root for them, you know, when they're not playing my pens. And I know my pens aren't going to be playing when it comes down to the playoffs. So go Canes. Go Canes. Go Rangers. I have this last word. So <laughs> listen, make sure you get with us next Thursday for another um, another episode with the Sports Chaser. It'll be episode 212. We'll probably – well, more than likely, we will be talking about hockey. Dan will be back with us next week. We'll be talking about the NCAA. By that time, the um, the um, tournament should be started with their playing game and all that stuff. So, And Major League Spring Train is in full effect going down in uh, the Grapefruit League and in the um, Cactus League in um, Florida and Arizona, prospectively, prospectively. So a lot to get in. NFL free agency, a lot of sports to get in. One of the great times of year, the springtime of the year so listen on behalf of myself i'm kevin l warren your host and moderator for dan k the hockey dude and the rest of the crew yo this is sports chasers podcast man yo we'll see you thursday be good enjoy the rest of your saturday enjoy the rest of your weekend we out peace that's a wrap for today's episode of the sports chasers podcast don't forget to subscribe on youtube and your favorite podcast platforms and connect with us on all social media channels for exclusive content and updates We'd also love for you to join the conversation, share your thoughts, and become part of the Sports Chasers community. And remember to tune in next time for some more real sports talk. Until then, stay frosty.